Hi, it's Alex. It's been a while since I recorded a video, and I've been wanting to get back into it. I want to talk about learning foreign languages, and I want to talk specifically about how I think that when I tried to learn languages in school, it wasn't very effective. And I only think I realized how and why it wasn't effective when recently I went back to trying to learn languages on my own. And the thing that got me into it was this website, Duolingo. If you haven't heard of Duolingo, I would highly encourage you to check it out. It's freaking awesome, and it's completely free. And it doesn't have every language available. Uh, it has a lot of them, though. Like, if you speak English and you want to learn another language, there are really good courses in Spanish, German, uh, Italian, Portuguese, French, and there are newer courses in all sorts of other languages like Turkish and Russian. Um, there are a lot of ones conspicuously missing, like uh, Chinese, there's no form of Arabic, uh, there are a lot of other important languages that aren't there yet. But it's still pretty awesome, and it's totally free. I started experimenting with this site, because I, I was hearing about it from different people, and I thought, okay, it's free, so what do I have to lose? So I started using this website. They have a web interface and a smartphone app, and I highly recommend the web interface. I think it's a lot better. It has some features that the smartphone app doesn't have. Um, and I started just doing it for about like 15 minutes a day, uh, casually. I started doing Spanish. Spanish is a language that I've been exposed to for a long time, but I don't know well. In my hometown, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, there are a lot of Puerto Ricans, and I heard a lot of Puerto Rican Spanish being spoken while I was growing up, so I have this sort of tangential exposure to it. And I took one year in school, in ninth grade, uh, and I've been to Puerto Rico once. So I had a little bit of exposure trying to like function there uh, with sort of broken Spanish. But that's like the limited exposure that I have to it. I don't feel like I got very much out of that year in school, either. When I started doing Duolingo, though, something really dramatic happened. I wasn't putting very much effort into it, very much time. But within about a month, I was shopping. I go to this uh, thing called the Newark, Delaware Farmer's Market that's pretty near where I live. And uh, the employees there mostly speak Spanish amongst themselves, and there are a lot of Hispanic people who shop there, so I hear a lot of Spanish when I'm there. And like after doing Duolingo for a little while, I noticed that my listening comprehension was improving dramatically when I was just overhearing these Spanish conversations. I was recognizing words, I was able to get the gist of the conversation, and this is like before going even halfway through the Duolingo course. I was just idly doing it on the side for a few minutes a day, and I noticed this dramatic increase in my listening comprehension. And it made me wonder, like, I started thinking about why. Like, why was I getting so much out of this? I did not have that experience when I was taking a year of formal coursework. Uh, I would be hearing Spanish spoken around me in school by native speakers, and I wouldn't be able to understand what people were saying, in spite of the fact that I was dedicating like 40 to 50 minutes in class every day, five days a week, to the study of this language. Like, what was different? And I came to, like, I, I came to this key realization. When I was learning Spanish in school, there was one fluent speaker. I don't even remember if she was a native speaker or not, but the teacher was obviously fluent. And everyone else in the class was a learner. They were learning the language for the first time. There may have been one or two Hispanic people who were taking it because it was easy. I don't really remember if that was the case or not. But most of the people in the class were not, they didn't know any Spanish, or they knew minimal Spanish, and they were trying to learn it. And we would spend a lot of time conversing with each other and interacting in class. And so I was hearing one fluent speaker speak, and I was hearing a ton of people speak who really didn't know how to use the language. So their pronunciation was bad, they were misusing words, pretty much everything about how they spoke was at this very rudimentary level and very tainted by the fact that they were native English speakers. Like, uh, I noticed this 
when you, you know English and you can like look at a word, like you have this Spanish word, uh, like gracias, and like you look at it and it's like uh, gracias, you can read it like as if it was written in English. And people do that kind of thing. And it took me quite some time to get to the point that realize, to realize that you can't just do that. You know, you have a different pronunciation, you have American R. It's a different sound, it's written the same way, but you do something different with your mouth. When I was doing Duolingo, I realized a lot of these things, and it was because I was listening to this standardized voice. Duolingo actually uses a text-to-speech system. It's a computerized voice, but it's a very good one. Uh, it very clearly enunciates things, and I found that when I listened to it closely, I was able to hear how each of the vowels and consonants were different, sometimes subtly different, and sometimes, like in the case of the letter R, very different, almost totally different, from the American pronunciation of those consonants. I started noticing things like the B and V sounds, or like the D. It's like easy to look at the D in the Spanish and say like, okay, like, you have a word like uh, felicidad, like, it's not like felicidad, it's like felicidad. I can't pronounce it perfectly, but like the D almost to me sounds a little bit more like a TH sound. Uh, and sometimes like when I hear uh, when I hear Puerto Ricans pronounce it, like you have a word like cuidado, c-u-i-d-a-d-o, and some people will say like cuidado, like you don't even hear the second D. And so like when I was listening in this program and I was not having my kind of soundscape polluted by people who were learning the language for the first time and who were speaking with all these like bad habits from English, when you took that out of the picture, suddenly I was liberated and I was able to hear the language for what it really was. And I found that my pronunciation started really improving. Um, and people noticed that like when I would speak Spanish, because I do have quite a few opportunities to speak Spanish in my daily life. Uh, there are both native speakers and uh, people who aren't native speakers but who are fluent, they've been to Spain, they've been to places in Latin America. And I have the opportunity to practice, and people were like, hey, your accent's getting a lot better. And all these insights make me, they made me want to share these, uh, these things with the world. I would really like to see us change and reform the way we teach languages, and the way we try to learn languages. Like after after having this realization, I never want to take a formal class again that is structured in a traditional way, of having like one fluent speaker who may not even be native, and then a bunch of people who are learning the language. Because like, it's just a formula for picking up bad habits. And I think that if you cut out those bad habits, you can greatly speed up your language acquisition. So how, how would I approach it? Right now, I think Duolingo is amazing. It's definitely not a standalone tool, though. There are other things that I've been doing the whole time. Like, I listen to a, a lot of music with the lyrics in Spanish just because I like it. I think that has helped me, too, to, like, get the pronunciation. I'm just listening to the language more. You can also watch videos, you can listen to radio. There are some great places where you can get all this stuff online for free. And there are all sorts of other online learning tools. I honestly haven't found anything, though, as effective as Duolingo. And I've now used Duolingo in multiple languages. I've gone through the entire course in Spanish, in German, and Portuguese. I taught that completely on my own, to myself, using Duolingo, and then I found a conversational group locally with mostly Brazilian native speakers of Portuguese, and I found that after about three months of doing Duolingo more intensely, I was able to converse with them too. Really exciting! Like, this is stuff that like, I've taken German and Spanish for, you know, I took years of German in high school, never really got quite as much out of it in such a short period of time. So I hope that this insight can help you too, that you can maybe save yourself some trouble, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to be surrounded by other learners and picking up bad habits from them, and really focus on like listening and pronouncing language, because I think everything gets easier if you do that.
I hope this has been insightful. I'd love to hear from you if you have any other tips to share and does this resonate with you? Like, are you like, yeah, heck yeah, this totally fits with my experience. Are you like, eh, maybe you're different from everyone else. I don't know, either way I wanna hear from you. Yeah, thank you.